Hi, this is Peter with Side Effects, and today we're going to be talking about the Feather Clump Sop. So in order to better visualize what's happening with this node, we have some supporting nodes that we're using. Uh, up here we have the default Feather Template Sops. Uh, this is what happens when you drop down the uh, Feather Template from the tab menu. So we get this default Feather. Uh, down here are some other nodes that we'll be using in a little bit, but first let's just talk about uh, some of the basic parameters of the Feather Clump. Uh, so there's two different modes that we can use here to uh, split this feather. We can use parametric or from attribute. So let's first talk about from attribute. Uh, in this case, we can bring any incoming attribute that's along this uh, center uh, curve here that we call the shaft. Um, that we can use any of the attributes in this case split is the default uh, we could use that attribute to then say whether or not there's a split occurring on the left or the right side um, of this feather uh, there, that's a two float vector and the first one describes um, splits on the left side the second is splits on the right and in this case uh, zero would be no split one would be a split so that's how the attribute works coming in there. But let's take a look at the actual parametric way that we can do this. So we have a few things here that we can change. We have the frequency. Uh, this can go uh, higher and lower to create more or less splits um, along the shaft. Uh, the other thing we can do here is use the jitter. So if I turn this back down, we can see that the jitter controls how much these line up. So if we have a jitter of zero, all the splits are going to happen on the same side or the same point on both sides. And if the jitter is one, they're going to like almost completely all be separate and different. So we're going to use it point, uh, 0 0.5 just to kind of give it a, a little bit of, of line, you know, lining up with where those splits happen, but giving it some randomness as well. And of course the seed will just change where those splits are occurring, like the random, it's the randomization that's happening along there. Then we can output a couple attributes. In this case, we have split and barb clump ID. So first let's take a look at split. Um, if we look at that one, we can see here uh, that splits are occurring uh, along the shaft here, and we can see uh, where those happen. Uh, when they're green, they're happening on the right. When they're red, they're happening on the left. And when they're yellow, uh, it's denoting that they're, it's happening on both sides. Uh, that's just because uh, a vector of 1, 1, 0 would be yellow. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here. Uh, and then obviously red would be 1, 0, 0, and green would be 0, 1, 0. So that is, we're just basically visualizing those two floats as a color attribute. Uh, so let's then also look at the barb clump ID. We can see here that uh, the barb clump ID basically shows which chunks of the feather barbs are grouped into which clump. So it's basically a way to kind of output this grouping that's happening along the feather um, to be able to use for downstream um, grooming and effects and things like that. So um, this barb clump ID doesn't really do anything for this actual node, but it's it could be useful later on uh, in your process. So that's what those two uh, attributes do, and that's what uh, you can obviously name these whatever you want, but by default they're named split and barb clump ID, and those are defaults in other nodes down the line. Um, so next you can see that we can either tell this node to actually do the clumping or not. So obviously if we were just outputting these attributes, you might want to turn off the do clumping. In this case, we are going to have it do the clumping and we can take a look at some of the parameters here as well. So the amount is going to be how much those barbs split apart. The fall off will be, uh, how far along kind of the fall off along the barbs that's happening with this split. So you can see, we can kind of change the way that that looks. And obviously we only have four virtual barbs here. If we had more, we could um, kind of refine this shape a little bit better. We'll just leave that at default. Uh, split depth basically says how far along the split actually happens. So if we set this to zero, there is no split. And if we set it to one, it splits all the way to the center shaft. And then shift will actually push it. When we go positive, it pushes it towards the tip of the feather shaft. When we go zero, it pushes it uh, back towards the root of the feather shaft. So that is uh, what the shift function would do. And then these last two parameters just define what the UV attributes um, are for the skin and the feather. Uh, usually, sometimes the skin could be, um, you know, where this feather is planted to on a, on a model. But in this case, um, we're going to do something a little bit different to kind of control these, uh, the way that the clumping is done um, from more of an artistic standpoint. Um, and we'll use these other supporting nodes to kind of show how that works. So in this, in these other nodes, we have a grid that has a UV projected on it uh, as a vertex attribute. 
this feather ray basically just looks at that geometry and looks at the feather uh, that's close to it, finds the closest point, and picks up the UV vertex attribute from it. It could pick up any at point attributes. It could also say what prim number and prim UV um, that we're pulling from it. It can also do sampling textures. Uh, from there, we feed um, this this feather uh, this geometry here uh, from the second input, which we're called which is called the skin input. So we're outputting the skin and putting it into this texture mask, and that's going to allow us to do some painting uh, actually on this uh, node itself. So we have uh, if we go down here, we have our feather clump, right? And we're going to let's override some of this with this texture um, primitive. So let's look at the amount. We'll do that with a texture primitive. And we're going to go along the curve UV because that's the center shaft curve that we're going to kind of paint along. So let's come back up to our texture mask. Uh, we'll see that this now kind of initializes. And now we have a paintbrush that we can actually brush on here. I have the opacity set to 0.25. Uh, you can change that in the viewport by using A and dragging um, and click dragging. But in this case, we'll just use 0.25. And what I can do here um, is as I paint this mask, it is going to show up as this texture uh, mask right here. And so that will actually drive the splitting behavior. So I can kind of paint this on here and get some random splits in our feather. And obviously this might be a little bit um, too coarse. So let's just up the frequency a little bit. We can get some maybe more interesting results here. So hopefully this shows how um, you could use this texture mask to override a bunch of different parameters here. Um, obviously anywhere you see in the feather tools, um, that can be overridden. So Hopefully this gives you a better sense of how the feather clump tool works, um, where it might fit into your workflow, and some of the ways that you can use it uh, to your advantage. Thanks so much for watching.